You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Monday, September 14, 2015. We always start with IYY, but we don't want to always start with the four-hour chart. Let's convert over to the two-day. This is what we see. This is what we've seen since the big drop on the 24th. This is a two-day chart. Down below is our MACD, our red signal line, and our blue MACD, moving average convergence divergence line. And then we have the candlesticks up top. All this prior movement to the big drop doesn't look like much. It did back before the big drop went and sort of made it all look like a snake with a head right here. What do we see happening after the big drop? A lot of sideways movement. And we see it all pretty much stopping on the total market, the IYY, at about $100 a share. What does that tell us? Well, it tells us there's not a lot of surging moving the market up. It's slipping sideways. We do see on the two-day chart the crossover that occurred before the big drop, and we see the continued down movement, although it does appear to be weakening, but there's no big up movement happening. Now, if we drop back to the four-hour chart, what do we see? Well, we again see a lot of sideways slipping. All of that happening since the 27th, and we see the MACD crossed over going up. I'm sorry, that sideways movement started actually after the 24th. And what do we see happening, though? We see the MACD continuing to move up, but the market's really not. What is that telling us? Well, that's telling us we've got a divergence here. We have a big up movement on the MACD, but we have a sideways slip on the total market. So that up movement doesn't show us much at all. In fact, if you look at what's happening with the Bollinger Bands, they're getting closer and closer because volatility is reducing significantly. So what is happening in the market? Well, sideways slippage and no movement up. It's bounding off the top here at about 100. So again, that's about all we're seeing is stopping right about 100, 150 cents or so, and no pressure to move it any further up, which means we could be looking at some down moves soon. We'll just have to see how that continues to play out. Caution is the word right now. What do we see happening on the S&P 500? And again, this is SPY. It's an ETF, an exchange-traded fund that tracks the S&P 500. Look again here. I've drawn this purple line over the last few days. It's been touching that three times on the two-day chart, but it's not gotten above it. We see that the, diver the derivative oscillator is losing some of its speed, and the MACD looks like it's converging to potentially cross on an up movement, but it's not happened yet. Now, let's go back to the four-hour chart, see what it shows us. Again, like we saw in the total market, the same sideways slippage since the big down move, and really not much happening. Again, I divergence. We're seeing the MACD move up, but the market just moves sideways. We reached higher highs on the MACD, but not higher highs on prices. That means that what we're seeing in any kind of up movement is not sustained. So we will continue to watch. Now, let's go to the Qs and go back to our two-day chart. What do we see there? We see the Qs, again, attempting to cross over going up. Derivative oscillators losing speed. But again, not much of an effort to move any higher than about 106 or so. So not a lot. What do we have overall for the day? Well, all of our indexes, that is the IYY, the Qs, and the S&P 500 are all up about half a percent. So we're continuing to watch. What does it look like most likely is going to occur? Well, if we don't see any crossing through, particularly the purple line we've drawn here on the S&P 500, then the market's getting ready to roll over and go back down. I think what the market's really waiting for is some word from the Fed on whether or not we're going to see interest rate increases or not. If that is a no, then of course we're going to see the market bound up. But if we find out that the interest rate increases will be coming, then of course we'll see probably continued strong down movement. This was the warning back here on the 24th of August. Now, let's go to our final chart that we're going to look at, and that is gold. Look at what gold is doing. We always start with a two-day chart, but on gold, what have we discovered? We have discovered that our four-hour chart 
is the most accurate one. It has boded well for the last several movements of gold. Crossed over going down here on the 25th, and it has continued to go down. Where is it now? Well, is gold reaching a bottom? I don't know, but it's hit this a few times at about 105. It moved down for the day on the daily chart, uh, 0.21%, but it didn't go any further below its low point that it's hit a couple of times, again, around 105.50. So continue to keep an eye on gold. If we see this MACD crossover going up, and it could any day now, if that happens, then you might want to look at a play on gold going up. Right now, hopefully, you've done a virtual purchase on gold going down around the 25th, and you've made good money in that inverse fund. So let's continue to pay attention. Thanks so much for joining us here at ChartingWealth.com. We'd love to have you with us every day. We hope that you had a good week trading this last week, and that this week starting on Monday the 14th is a good one for you. Please follow us on Facebook and Twitter. You can also follow us on Instagram. Look up just Charting Wealth on all three of those, and go to our website, ChartingWealth.com, to sign up for our daily newsletter. Thanks so much for joining us. We love to hear from you at ChartingWealth.com.